Hey, Stingrays fans, Joseph Zakrzewski with you for the South Carolina Stingrays TV, and I'm joined alongside the Vice President of Hockey Operations for the ECHL and Joe Ernst. Now, certainly a very special welcome to you coming back down here to the Low Country. I know you travel all across the ECHL. It's good to see you again, my friend. Hey, good to see you too. Thanks for having me. Now, I know part of your journey is to evaluate a lot of the officiating and when it comes to uh, all the different officials that pass, not only through here in the region, but across the ECHL as well. But what I want to catch up with you, in first and foremost, it is kind of the tail end of the season, so it's you know kind of hard to talk about the rule changes that were put in place at the beginning of the year. But I do want to get your, ta your take on them and how they've helped grow this league and, and to review some of those rule changes, something as simple as, as the uh, two-minute minor for taking your helmet off during a fight, or if you lose your helmet during a game, you have to head off instead of continuing continuing to play. How do you feel like those rules have helped the ECHL this season? Well, I think from a safety standpoint, I think it's helped with, uh, you know, losing your helmet, you have to go right off. It's from safety issue. And then obviously you losing your helmet, uh, taking your helmet off before a fight is a minor penalty, which is another safety issue. Um, I think the best rule change we made was the hybrid icing. Um, gone from the, uh, the, the, it's still automatic, but we still have the race where you can design plays and everything else. So I think that's probably the best one we've put in as far as, uh, as, far as the new rule changes for this year. Now looking at everything and how things are shaken up, I'm just going to use examples that the Stingrays have, have been involved in and, and you were an official yourself so whenever you put a rule in place there's always going to be ways that guys are going to try and find their way around it yeah. so we'll go ahead and talk about the uh, maybe taking your helmet off before a fight certainly that was implemented because guys you know if they were to fall backwards hit their head on the ice it does a lot more damage than it does good in terms of getting the crowd and, and the team fired up but what I've noticed now not just with the, the stingrays but with the opponents too if they're ready to take a fight they might maybe unbuckle their helmet yeah. for the first time or, or come out of the box with it a little loose than what they normally have any plans of possibly trying to change that? There's nothing uh, uh, about doing that. Um, I think, you know, we've seen it where the guys are doing that or, you know, they're, they're trying to get it off, which they're probably the fighters are so they don't hit their ha uh, hands on the shield. Nothing right now. I don't know if it'll be brought up for a rules committee or not, but I, I don't see anything. I think we're, we're good with what we are uh, right now as far as the helmet stuff. Now moving forward, uh, as the ECHL playoff race is, is kicking up, the Stingers right in the middle of it with their record winning streak. You're also seeing the playoff races heat up in the National Hockey League, the American Hockey League as well. But something that, that's floated a little underneath the radar in terms of the of the headlines coming out of the hockey world, but us hockey fans have been paying attention, have been the GM meetings down in Boca Raton and, and a lot of discussions with further changes to the game, rule changes, face-offs, how we want to approach overtime. And one of the things that I found pretty fascinating was what the American Hockey League is experimenting with the OT session going from four-on-four -four skates to three-on-three. -three. I know that's something that makes the game a lot more exciting, gets rid of the shootout as often, but from your standpoint, you're kind of sitting back a little bit and seeing what the AHL and the NHL does. Does. What notes are you taking from these meetings and, and what you've seen this season? Well, I actually pushed to have three-on-three -three overtime for this year, to be honest with you. I'm um, just lucky enough to do Traverse City where we do three-on-three, -three and it's, you know, that whole thing, you know, with the American League, it, it started with Kenny Holland, the GM in the Red Wings, who was a big proponent of going three-on-three, -three, and they're trying it. Um, I know we're going to push for, for it this year, or at least I'm going to push for it. I know Robbie's going to push for it as well. Um, that's one of the big, one of my big things this offseason is to go three-on-three. I don't know what format we'll have. It will have it, you know, two minutes, three minutes, whatever it may be. I don't know if we'll go seven minutes like the American League, uh, just because of our short bench and our three and threes. I think we need to keep it at five minutes, but uh, at some point, three on three. And then also maybe like the, the hash marks, we'll adopt the hash marks, I would assume, that uh, like they did in the NHL and the AHL this year. They just, it came late with the hash marks as far as on the face-off dots, but three on three is going to be the, uh, my big push for the, uh, for the off season for sure. Now, one thing about the ECHL, much like the American Hockey League, it's all about promoting and, and growth, not only for the players, but for the officials as well. And we saw something very special at the American Hockey League level, your first international referee making their debut, a gentleman coming out of Russia, putting on the orange bands for the yeah. first time. I know that's something that would probably, we'd like to see expand here a little bit too, just getting a little bit more officials coming through the mix and making their way up, especially when you get more teams coming into the ECHL. Yeah, you know, we're, we're always looking for the officials and everything else. We're trying to get the, you know, we're, we're working with the NHL the best we can. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on as far as with them and their development program. Uh, I'm just trying to put my uh, hand on where they're at and what they're doing as far as that. You know, we have a bunch of guys from, from our end of it that need to be looked at as well. So it's, uh, it's kind of a touchy subject as far as, as, far as that. But, uh, um, you know, I think, uh, I think here's the league that they should be coming to, to develop, to be honest with you. Not just because I'm wearing the officiating and the hockey operations hat, but this is the, this is the league where you learn how to referee. Um, if, and I'll argue with anybody as far as, as, far as that goes. 
Now moving forward, it's funny because you come into town this weekend, but then last weekend we had Danny McCourt with the National Hockey League join us and, and oversee some of the officials for that game. So how has the communication been? Because I know from the NHL, the AHL, to the ECHL, it seems like these past couple months have been exciting, but my, the changes have been coming with ECHL teams coming to the East Coast, American Hockey League teams going to the West Coast. So how has the transition, how has the communication been from your standpoint? Because certainly it affects your scheduling and who's able to go out there and wear the orange bands. Well, we, you know, I mean, we work with the American League because we have nine of our guys that are on our staff full-time work the American Hockey League. So it's it's a juggling act and everything else. Um, we're getting to that point in the season where I tell them pretty much, you know, it's not going to be all right to take our guys because of the uh, because of what we need. You know, we got playoff races. You look at the standings where we're at uh, today, and we have a bunch of teams fighting for their playoff lives. And you know, we want to have our, our guys here that uh, th that we brought in for the season. We want them here and everything else. So I mean, they've got to work the American League during the season, but now come crunch time and playoff time, you know what? Uh, we'll have them back. Now, Joe, my final question for you before I let you go here is, is what's your focus now? The season's starting to wind down. The playoffs are right around the horizon. You get teams in, in playoff clinching scenarios already. So in your conversations with officials, you probably had quite a few of them individually and as a team. But moving forward, and, and, and not to say that we're looking to the summer already, but just these last few games, the playoffs, what are you looking for? What are you trying to communicate to them? Well, myself and all our supervisors, you know what, our, our main thing is, is here is that, you know, every power play means something, every uh, every face-off means uh, something, you know, every offside means something. You know, we want good oh, yeah. two minutes, uh, good two-minute penalties. Um, not that we don't want them in the regular season, but everything gets gets heightened now. You know what, uh, all the plays at the net, we need to make sure somebody's at the net. You know, we're in playoff mode right now. I mean, we have teams, uh, we're here tonight with Indies playing and they're fighting for their playoff life. So everything is everything is important from here on out. Not that it's not important in October, but everything's magnified at this time of the year. And uh, so um, the guys need to be ready to work, you know, mentally, physically ready. I know it's been drained. They've been drained all year, no different than the players, but you know, you have to stay focused and be ready to go uh, as, soon as, uh, as soon as the clock hits uh, 20 there. Joe, thank you for your time. Great to catch up. No problem, Joey Z. Thanks. The Vice President of Hockey Operations with the ECHL, Joe Ernst, joining us here on Stingrays TV.